Okay, so um, here we go. So we're breaking down um, Russia, this Russian player versus this Norwegian player, uh, Krom. Um, I'm gonna butcher this. Krom Tkov versus uh, Odeman, and um, I've been rushing. I've been watching this Russian player for a while. He's won the 2017 World Championships. Uh, this Norwegian player I'm not too familiar with. Hi, Christine. Um, I originally actually watched this because I wanted to study the Russian player, what was new, what was meta, uh, what he was doing, because obviously this is Grand Prix Finals. And then um, I was uh, very pleased with how fast he was adapting to his opponent. And uh, But overall, I'm just... There's a... I was very impressed with both sides during this game. So I thought it was good to cover not only just for basic strategy, overall gameplay and tactics, but how to play round per round per round and um, and tactics and strategy within the uh, the whole system itself. So they just finished testing. Uh, let's just fast forward a bit. Good. Okay. Um, so, what I like about the Russian player, what I like about generally uh, really good players overall, is that the offensive press or the need to be the one who's asserting yourself or taking initiative is paramount. And uh, in this one, Russia obviously takes the lead right away, and he opens. Uh, he opens with, in my opinion, one of his best weapons. Norway almost gets him back, uh, but. It's a very good way to make sure your opponent kind of stays on the back foot uh, psychologically. Because if you're going to the head right away, it's the initial reaction. It kind of sets the tone for, for, the, for the other guy to go back. Good Norway using his right leg defense. Right leg and front defense. Good. Um, what I like both sides here is uh, Norway already adapted. You can say, yeah, well, that's obvious, Chris, but... Usually adjustments don't come this fast, so I feel like he was scouted beforehand, not only just this tournament, but in uh, his fights overall, and uh, for him to do the fish kick underneath. And then what I like about Russia is he did all the cut kicks earlier this whole last 30 seconds after the initial one to try and set up the second kick. You, uh, lure him low, lure him low, and then try and go to the head. Really like that from both sides. Good. I feel like this is good. Uh, this is the second time or third time doing this take already, but what I pointed out each time was uh, Red's point here. I like because I would call it defensive because he's not really taking initiative to score. He's just trying to keep Russia off of him to make sure Russia doesn't feel too confident pressing. So here Russia presses, uh, goes into distance. Russia goes into distance to make sure that he doesn't get gumped or got like he doesn't get called for not for not engaging. And to make sure that Russia knows that he's still a threat, he shoots it forward uh, that time and was able to score. So really good on red side, accuracy wise, and just for maintaining a maintaining uh, strength throughout the game. Russia immediately adjusting, which is what I like to see, uh, getting around the front foot. He doesn't feel like there's a back leg coming because it's been about a minute. He goes right in with the second time. That's really good too. Um, I can break that down. So, the whole minute Russia is cutting and cutting and cutting, and there's been no back leg. So, at this point, and Russia's been poking quite a fair amount, so he knows that it's probably just the front leg coming up, and if you can get around the front leg, you're going to score. The first time he gets the punch, and what I like about Russia the second time, so here, Russia gets the punch, right? He just scored it. And almost immediately, Russia's looking for the same opening, because... It, he just got the punch point. Red's mentally usually just, oh, he got a point. How do I counter that? And Russia's going in right away before Red can come up with a complete counter for for how to adjust against the punch. Usually it takes a little bit more time unless he's very well trained against it. Sometimes people just switch legs to completely nullify it. Uh, ooh. Good kick underneath. Russia keeping up the pressure. So very. what I also want to say is very good both sides. Russia's adapting very fast, 
and after the adaptation works, he hits it again before Red can adjust. That's the key point to take away from Russia right here. Norwood being a little more offensive, trying to be a little more assertive during the match. Russia's not letting it happen. Um, what I would like to say, though, small... This is very mini school, but I think at this level it matters a little bit. He cuts here and then he kind of backs off. Um, my ideal fighter right now is like Dehun. He's king for me. I don't think in that situation Dehun would have backed off because that's points he earned. Or no, it's not really points. That's really that's space he earned um, at the distance, and he wouldn't want to give away that for free. Like he'll keep people on the edge the whole time if the player allows it to. I feel like they're both trying to figure out what to do next. One of them probably, yeah, probably going to poke a little bit just to keep things moving. Nice follow-up. Still no back leg response from Norway. So Russia's, Russia's trying to get around this front leg. Ooh, very accurate front leg, though. Wow. Nice punch. Yeah. Like I said, the whole thing's just getting around Norway's front leg now. Russia adapting both ways using his back leg and punch. But the key points for me in round number one were um, Russia's offense. He's poking a lot. Um, he did the head kick. He threw in some camouflage, um, some head kicks to the body, and then threw the head kick again. When the head kick a second time, the over-the-top head kick was already answered by Norway. Notice he didn't throw it a third time because Norway already has the answer to it. So that's a key, way, key thing to take away. The other thing is when Russia did find an answer, he found the punch, he used it right away before uh, Norway could adjust to him again. So uh, for these of you guys out there, if you're fighting and you're able to find the counter, using it within the next two to three seconds is usually very, very good uh, because the player is still mentally like, oh, he scored, how do I counter? And while he's thinking, how do I counter? If you're going in with the second time, usually it's another free point. Second round, let's see how both players adjust here. Good. So Norway kind of knows now he can't just sit back and let Russia press him because Russia's getting all of his points off of the punch so far. Um, and one of them on a, on a little you know flip kick underneath. But for the most part, he knows Russia's game plan. If he does not change the way he's fighting, Russia will just come in and punch him every single time. Good, so now he's standing a little bit more firm, not giving back as much. His uh, posture is a lot also more on top. There you go, so he's pressing more. Because he knows he can't let Russia do dictate the fight. Even on these ones, I think in round one, he was... Uh, in round one, Norway was falling backwards on these. He's not giving Russia that, that uh, ability anymore because he knows a punch is coming. Uh... I don't know if Norway really saw it, but it looks like Russia's game plan is to get him close and then try for the out in. It's kind of, I, I don't think know if he saw it because it was behind his shoulder. So I'm not sure if he knew what technique was coming. Very nice, Norway. Taking the offense to Russia now. That may be because either the ref said, or his, his coach was saying he needs to press more, or it's because Norway wanted to gauge how good Russia was, or how strong he was, or speed wise, and he feels more confident offensively now. Good. Slide adjusted adjustment two here. The first time they clinched, um, Nor was a little bit more relaxed, and Russia tried to get the out in. In this second clinch, you can watch Norway. He's uh... actually no, my fault. That was my bad. That was Russia trying to create distance. I thought Norway became offensive in the clinch. I was gonna say, wow, that's a really fast adjustment, but it's Russia trying to create space to first out in. We're just trying to give him different looks now. See if he can sneak this. Yeah. The whole offense here is now based around getting around Norway's front leg. So far, nothing too crazy defensive-wise from Norway's back leg. But this leg, if you notice, was cut here. It's not really at the head level. It's like, it's kind of low to prevent Norway's leg from flicking up. And he gets in the clinch, and he wants to maximize in the clinch. Um, Norway's getting a good job of making sure that doesn't happen. 
Russia on the complete offenses. Ooh, nice job on both sides. Norway's front foot is very accurate. Russia knows he has to uh, try and mount some kind of offense here. Good. Good job maximizing outside. I try to harp on players on this a lot because a lot of players give up ring space like it's nothing. So very good offensive um, try for the head here. Uh, what I like here, though, yeah, he, he was able to score in the clinch. That's fine. Russia here, though, knows he's almost out of bounds, maximizes it, lets it back in. Or uh, doesn't let him back in. He forces him out to get his point. So instead of having to do two he like a head kick plus something else, it's limited to one head kick. Unfortunate for Russia though that Red was able to score in that score in that zone. Good. He went back to his number one weapon here. Tried for it um, after giving so many different looks. Tried to go back to his bread and butter. I don't mind doing that because I mean your main kick's your main kick, and if you find a way to camouflage it, camouflage it, camouflage it, and then throw it better for you so I don't really mind that Norway knows Russia has to come so he's he's chilling I feel like it more in his zone now uh, the defensive front leg yeah you gotta be careful though because Russia knows it's just that leg so if he can get around it he can block it then uh, it's pretty much fair game for him after that very nice he's still going back to the bread and butter and the reason the reason this is effective now, not as much as before, because um, Russia opened with with his flick, flick, flick head, flick, flick, flick head, and Norway countered it. The second time he did it, Norway didn't really counter it. And then so the third time he's doing it, and especially because they've been gauging so much, um, Norway is probably not thinking that as the initial uh, the initial attack anymore. So it's very well hidden. It's within a good mix of techniques, so it's not the same look over and over again. And it's hard to guess. Uh, and I think that's, and for me, that's why it's okay for Russia to be doing that now. It's It's been mixed, it's been hidden, and he's throwing it again. Uh, without, while while giving Norway different looks is what I, what I mean to say. Good punch. I think I fast forwarded for you guys, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, there's a zoom in of those two, and then, oh, it just happened, it happened just after. After that, I think. Yeah. Nice try, both sides. Goes back to the punch. Very nice. No, no point. Wow. I would have. I thought that would score for sure. Yeah, I thought that would have scored for sure. Um, it's for my own benefit, I actually want to see something here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Getting that. Zoom in. Not, not, that's not the... What I want to see here is... Very nice by Russia. Nice try again. I want to see what Red's doing here. Ah... Uh, Fast forward to third rounds. I'll show you guys what I was looking for. Nice try by Russia a lot though. He, a lot of multiple flicking head kicks. Um, he's very good at that and just a little bit unlucky he wasn't able to time it. You're always able to, to, to make it connect. Fast forward, fast forward, here we go. Good offense. Oh, we're taking the offense again. There it is. Okay, so the reason I, I checked the other side um, was something Korea likes to do a lot is in the third round, or in the second round, in the last 15 to 10 seconds, Korea will throw a technique. And the whole point of the technique is to just test what is useful in the third round. Um, so in the, third in the second round this time, Red threw a defensive head kick almost connected and so in the third round um, I'm not sure if they're copying the Koreans or this show happened to be um, happenstance um, but red throws that throws the defensive off ball to the face and connects and what I this one caught me a lot by surprise the first time I watched it because he didn't throw it at all in the first round he I believe he only threw it 
once in the second round, once or twice in the second round. And the second time, if it was even two times, was at the very end. So he, he kept his ace in the hole um, almost hidden the entire time until it was a tipping point for him to uh, beat Russia. Here, good offense. Um, I think in general, that's just to make sure Russia is... It's to let Russia know that he's going to be assertive. Like, you're not going to dictate the third round, even though I'm behind. I'm not going to be complacent about this. Um, it's really just this part, though. That's when I was like, dude, this Norway guy is different deal. The to keep to keep that kind of a weapon hidden for so long into going into the third round, I thought that was, dude, you're that is pretty genius in my opinion. I was very impressed with that. It's so not only that three points. Russia falls over, uh, not able to make his inside out crescent kick hit. Russia's up by four. Now this is a or up, excuse me, up by five now. This is a kind of a medium deficit now. Before it was only up by one, and that's you know that's that's one body kick. Now as he's up by five, that is a humongous swing in his favor. And so uh, Russia's gonna have to do a lot more, a lot more antics uh, to, to try and get a, a point in. And it plays right into red because uh, Norway's game has been defensive, in my opinion. Nice try. He knows he knows Russia has to come in, so he can take those those high shots like that because the chances of Russia going backwards now is very is a lot smaller than it was in the first and second round because he's, he has such a high lead. It doesn't make sense for Russia to play defensively. He needs to get points. And if your opponent's not moving backwards, it's really easy to hit. Or it's not really easy. It's easier to hit. Good. Keeping him at bay. Yeah. Russia's whole offense still is to, to just get around this guy's front leg and try and maximize something on the inside. All the traps, all of the... Notice when he's going for the head kicks, it's always a it's a it's a double jump. It's like a knee up and then something, or a cut 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 body, and then that one's a knee up axe kick, just to destroy the front leg. So if he were to front leg against that, it would clash, and then he can get a kick on top. And that's the reason he's doing that. Um, I think he's hoping Red will lift because if that doesn't work and he's still stationary, he can also punch afterwards. Russia's whole offense now is just jam the front leg, clash it, mix it up with your legs, whatever, and then follow up because Red so far has. The follow-up game has been a lot higher in Russia's favor. He's trying for the punch, but in general, the uh, good nullify the front leg. He's trying, trying what he can. Good and uh, Red's just very content, kind of taking pot shots. I think it'd be a little cooler if Red shot stronger cuts. Based on the way they're moving, though, it seems like they're both kind of tired now. Nice punch. Yeah. I think Red could throw a couple more. Like, he, had, he even has his right leg in front there. He could have, um, like, just a strong cut, I think. Defensively, maybe, maybe good. I also think that he may be scared, though, because Rush has been spinning. So that might be why he's trying to avoid it. Good lock it up. Uh, I don't know. Well, lucky the other guy didn't score, but. Oop. Oh, how unfortunate. <laughs> Such bad luck for Russia. <laughs> Your belt is on the floor, sir. Um, really bad luck for Russia there. And Russia's been very good. In, in my opinion, Russia's doing what as as much as he can jamming the front leg coming with the back leg jamming the front leg coming with the punch and sometimes faking to jam the front leg and then throwing a a, a back kick or some kind of spin kick uh, with the threat of the four points to the body uh and so my opinion you know reds obviously his defense is exceedingly good to be here at the grand prix final but rush is doing what he can offensively to try and do that i think the only other thing i you might try and mount as an offense against a tall player who's ahead of you is if you add more fakes or motion and try and get him to lift it and extend more, that may give you a little bit more of an opening. Um, with 40 seconds on the board though, I'm not sure how much of those, how many of those plays you can do. Good, red keep him off him, red keep him off him. Good back kick. 
He's been waiting for that for a long time. Trying to get the punch in, still, still the same offense. Spin, punch, or jam the front leg and go. I think if in red that since in, in that instance, I thought it would be cool if he did a flick because in this first one here, I won't hold you guys for too long. But in this first part here, he cuts. I believe yeah, Russia doesn't really, Russia's defense was to stand there. In this one, if you cut axe or something, Russia's probably looking for punch. Yeah. Um, that would have been my guess, especially because usually defensively, most people don't do it twice at the higher levels. So the first time he moved back, the second time it's likely he's going to be moving in or countering in place. So if you cut Axe right away, um, expecting they're going to counter or to try and do the hold punch thingy, uh, then you'd have been in a good spot. Uh, but I mean, hell, they're both pretty tired right now. Uh, and it's easy to say as a person who's commentating from my from a room behind a computer screen, obviously. Like, obviously tired. Russia seems to be in pretty good shape still. He's not showing he's tired. But, uh, oh no, he looks he looks tired. He's giving a little bit, <laughs> giving way a little bit there. He's just not showing he's tired. Blah, blah, okay. Uh, Back to the match, here we go. Looks like it was not taken away. So for those for, for those of you guys who missed it, it was a, a call for holding. Um, they ended up saying it was actually holding, so they didn't remove the point for red. Nice try with the spin, though. Very nice try. It's just unfortunately got point scored on. A lot of these ones here. I like Russia's house still trying, but I mean, uh, any points beyond the the that point is kind of just eh, he has to put forth the effort and put himself at risk. Uh, Russia's in for Russia's frustrated. He lost. Any score is any score. I mean, this guy's world champion, so I can imagine the, the region player being very happy. Uh, but yeah, good fight, guys. Good fight overall. So in my recap of this fight, um, notice Russia's offense. Um, he hit the adjustment right away. When he f knew his opponent knew what he was doing, he's, he quickly changed it and adjusted around it. He didn't throw that for a while. It took him, I think, a whole nother round before he threw his flip, flip, flip head kick again. Um, or it took him at least, it wasn't a whole round, but it took him a little while before he threw it again because he knows that red or the Norway Norwegian player had, um, had a counter. The second point to take away is when he did find the adjustment, the punch, he used it right away before his opponent could think of a counter to his adjustment. So he got the punch in on the next exchange within one or like once I wasn't, I don't think it was in three seconds, like within two seconds, he used it a second time. Um, I, in my opinion, should have gotten the point. But that's something you guys can apply to your own sparring. Is if you find a counter on someone, and especially if it's offensive, then you can use it right away, uh, most likely a second time. Uh, especially if they're stunned by it. Um, third is uh, by the Norwegian player being very accurate. It's obviously important, uh, technically. But holding on to that ace in the hole until the third third round, I thought was like, dude, that's that was pretty, uh, that was pretty G. <laughs> like props to you man really good job on that one um and he he kind of tested like korea did korea will generally test something in the last 15 10 15 seconds of the second round so that way in the third round you can't adjust against it anymore so if you guys are ever fighting korea watch out for that uh he held his until the third round um so good job for him and then uh russia's offense uh i think i mean obviously his the player red's defense was very good but Russia is doing what he can on the offense, throwing three variations of an attack, all of them centered around jamming up the guy's main weapon, which is his front foot, jam up the front foot, come up over, come up under, jam up the front foot, punch, or trap the front foot and then spin. Uh, Russia did what he could. I think just accuracy-wise, uh, Red was a lot stronger this time around. And um, overall, good fight. So those are things you guys can take with you. Hopefully, you guys learned something from this broadcast. And uh, I'll see you guys next Friday. Take it easy.